So pray that the word of God that will come to you this morning shall be plain and open unto you. Pray that the word of God that will come to you this morning will inspire you, will propel you, will move you into your next level. Just talk to the Holy Ghost, talk to the Holy Ghost. Stay your mind, stay your mind on the Lord. Stay your mind on the Spirit. Father, we thank you. We are in your presence this morning. We thank you for the Spirit of God. Our teacher, our guide, our helper, our strengthener, our standard. The Spirit of the living God. The Spirit of the risen Christ. He that liveth in us, he that dwelleth in us. He that motivates us, who inspires us, who moves us onto the things of God. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the inspiration of the Spirit. Because your word says that the word of God is given by inspiration. And is profitable unto us for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That we may be thoroughly furnished, ready for good work. Thank you for the gift of your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Can I have your wonderful seat? Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity to share with us the word of God. Hallelujah. We've been handling a series on soul winning and on Wednesday I was talking about I talked a little bit about about hell it's it's a spirit that the enemy is using as a tool to advance his kingdom Jesus says the devil has a kingdom. So he says, if Satan casts out Satan, how will his kingdom stand? So which means the devil has a kingdom. And so his kingdom is well structured to achieve his goal. And his goal is to steal, kill, and destroy, as we looked at at the beginning of this series. Praise the Lord. And we also saw that hell enlarges itself to take nations, to take more people. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 5. So it talks about that. It increases its desire unless it is intercepted by us. Praise the Lord. You know, a man of God has said, in heaven there is no free time. In the spirit, there is no free time. <coughs> Praise the Lord. In the realm of the spirit, there is no? There is no free time. Because both sides are busy trying to achieve their goals. But Jesus Christ already let us know, Matthew 16, 18, that he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And by the way, hell is not the final place. It's just a pre it's a remand place. You know, like how the judge has not yet handled your case and so you are taken for remand. So it's, it's, it's a holding place. It's, it's a place between between this life and judgment. Praise the Lord. So the wicked men, the sinners are kept there awaiting judgment. Praise the Lord. It's not the final place because Revelation lets us know that hell and the sea also gave up the dead which were in them. So before the judgment day, hell brought out the dead that are in them. The people that had been reserved there for judgment, they brought them out for judgment. And after they were judged, the Bible says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now that is the final place the lake of fire. And the Bible says both hell and death were also cast into the lake of fire. Praise the Lord. 
so the final place is actually the lake of fire now when you when your physical body touches fire you you understand the pain that you go through praise the lord now the other fire the bible says it is not made from oxygen the oxygen does not is it is not made from wood or what the bible says it is brimstone and sulfur maybe the chemists will know the combination of sulfur praise the lord and that is where the devil and the false prophets and the dragon were all cast into the lake of fire praise the lord hallelujah now that place was not made for man jesus lets us know that it was not made for man at all it was made for the devil and his angels praise the lord but the enemy doesn't want to go there alone he wants to go with the people that he has been able to deceive praise the lord but we are so blessed that um, god will always give us a provision will always give us a platform where we can exercise our authority and be able to fulfill that which he has called us to do hallelujah now i want us i want to get into something about the making of a soul winner or the preparation of a soul winner now not every christian is an evangelist praise the lord but all Christians have been called to evangelize. Are we together? Not all of us are called to be evangelists. But every Christian has been given a responsibility to evangelize. Praise the Lord. I may be called to an office of an evangelist. And the Bible makes it clear my purpose there is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Now, the pastors, the evangelists, the prophets, and the teachers, their purpose is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. To equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So my work as an evangelist, who has been called in that office of an evangelist, is to equip the saints so that they may understand the purpose of an evangelist. Now, that doesn't mean that I cannot go out to evangelize. No. Praise the Lord. By my experience in the field, I can guide, I can help to equip people with knowledge, with the ability to evangelize. Praise the Lord. But all of us have been given that responsibility to evangelize our communities, to evangelize our friends, to evangelize whosoever. We read the other time, Jesus said that if you stand up for me, among anyone you meet on the way, those that you meet on the way, he said, if you stand up for me, I will stand up, the Son of Man will stand up for you in the presence of his angels and in the glory of his Father. Hallelujah. So God has empowered us. He has given us as a force to restrain hell. When he says the gates of hell shall not prevail, he's not talking about a power that will come from heaven and will stop the enemy. He was talking about you. Hallelujah. He was talking about you. You are the one to stop the advancement of hell around your place. Hallelujah. And I was saying that do not allow death to reign near you. Don't allow it. If by any chance any man died around your neighborhood, you said this is the last time. Hallelujah. You have that ability, that power to say this is the last time it will ever happen. Praise the Lord. Why? Because God has left us in this world to preserve men's life. Jesus said the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's life, but to preserve, to save them. Praise the Lord. So Jesus, walking along the Sea of Galilee, meets some fishermen, and they were fishing. And the Bible says there were some boats which were out there, and the fishermen had gone out of them. And then he asked Peter and said, can I use your boat? And Peter said, yes. So he said, okay, push it a little further into the sea. And he did that. And Jesus says, he stood into the boat and taught people. Because people were pressing upon him to hear the word of God. Praise the Lord. 
And he taught, and actually when you read from other gospels, realize that what Jesus actually taught was the parable of the sower. Praise the Lord. And now, when he talks about the parable, so he says, For a sower went out for to sow. And as he sowed, some fell along the roadway. Others fell among thorns. Others fell on rocks. Others fell on good ground. Now, we are looking at a sower who goes out to sow the seed. But I want to bring your attention, when a farmer wants to go and sow seeds, does he just go and pick any land and say, okay, I am going to sow maize corn on this land. It doesn't do that. Praise the Lord. He looks for a comfortable, a fertile ground. Because what he wants is harvest. He wants to harvest corn. Praise the Lord. So he doesn't just go and sow his corn on thorny grounds. No, he doesn't just sow his, his seeds on rocky grounds. No, he doesn't just sow his seed along the wayside. Praise the Lord. So, he's talking about the mindset of the sower. He says, when you go to sow seeds, are you mindful? Do you know, do you understand that some of the seeds, some of the words that you're talking, some will fall along the wayside? Some will fall on rocky grounds? Others will fall among thorns? Praise the Lord. So as you're going to preach out, do you have that mindset? So if you understand, so when a farmer sees that this land is good, but it has thorns, what does he do? He plows. Are we together? What does he do? He plows. He prepares the ground for the seed. Now in the realm of the spirit, this is where the preparation happens. And Jesus said, the field is the world. The world. Hallelujah. So how prepared are you in your mind to go and sow the word of God? You know, I have to go and, and, and share the gospel with my neighbor. And then you just walk and begin to talk. Now Jesus Christ never did like that. Praise the Lord. In Luke chapter 6, the Bible tells us how he went and continued praying. He went and prayed and continued all night in prayer. Now when he, the following day, the Bible says, he called unto himself the disciples whom he appointed apostles. Now, me, when I'm reading the gospel, I read different accounts from the different books. If I'm reading the parable of the sower, I look at the account of Mark. I look at the account of Luke. At the account of Matthew. Is there consistency? Is there something that needs to be added on? So when you follow that train, you understand that when Jesus actually went to pray, he realized that himself cannot do this work alone. He needed to appoint certain men. In Mark chapter 3 from verse 42, he tells us that... Uh, he appointed the apostles that they may be with him and that he may send them out to preach. So the purpose of his choosing the twelve was not just so that he may have disciples. There was a purpose. He appointed them that they, number one, that they may be with him first to learn, to follow his examples. Then number two, that he may send them out. The second didn't come first. Number one, that they may be with him. That's why he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In other words, there is the first thing that we have to do is to follow. A soul winner follows instructions without question. Very important. If you do not follow instructions in your life, doesn't matter whether it's about soul winning, any kind of instruction from your superior, from your leader, if you are that kind of person who has been not following instruction, every instruction you get, must I do it that way? Must it be done that way? You are breaking ranks. And the Bible says, watch out for those that break ranks. Jesus said, follow me. See how I do it. 
See how I pray. Observe my lifestyle. So a soul winner follows instructions. And that is why if you do not follow instruction, the Holy Ghost cannot use you. Because if you're sitting in a taxi and you get a conviction to talk to this person about Jesus and you don't do it, you are not following instructions. So number one, effective soul winner does what? Follows what? Instructions. He says, follow me. Hallelujah. And by the way, Jesus did not tell this man to leave whatever they are doing and go. The Bible says, and they forsook all and followed him. Hallelujah. And from that time, I began also to follow Jesus in the scriptures. Hallelujah. Because he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So if he told the disciples to follow him, I also began to follow him. In other words, I began to read the train, his movements. From there next, where did he go? Whom did he minister to? What did he say? I was following. Why? Because I needed to know what are some of those things. Hallelujah. And you realize that from that time, they went and Jesus began to minister. Praise the Lord. So, you have to have the ability, train yourself to follow instructions. Hallelujah. If an announcement has been made, for example, about soul winning, plan your week. You know already that on Saturdays they're going to be compulsory soul winning. Plan your week. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter, chapter 12, verse 47. The Bible says, that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself to do his master's will shall be beaten with many stripes. Aha. Uh -huh. You thought there is no book in heaven. It is there. Jesus says, that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself, you didn't plan your week. You didn't plan yourself to go for soul winning. You didn't plan your resources for soul winning. He said, that servant who knew, you knew, and did not prepare himself, did not make necessary preparation, either through prayer, either through the word, through availability of your time. He says, that servant will be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know, praise the Lord, and did those things which are worthy of stripes, he says, those ones will receive few. They will not just go like that. Eh? He said they will receive few. Because they didn't know their master's will. And from the teaching of this series, we have already understood the, our master's will. We know his agenda. Hallelujah. So there is no excuse. Jesus said, if I had not told you, you would have no sin. But now that I have said unto you, your sin remains. Hallelujah following instructions. And what did Jesus say? If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me. And what is his commandment? Go ye out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every what? Creature. How many creatures? Even money is a creature. Because the gospel is good news. Hallelujah. The gospel is Good news. So preach it to every creature. Whether it is a car, whether it is anything that is a creature. Preach to it. I remember when I was in high school during my early days. My dad would go to work and everyone has gone to do their own business. I would lock up myself in a room and pick up a mingling stick. Praise the Lord. And pick up a mingling stick and I would start to preach. Praise the Lord. And this is the practical thing that I used to do. I believe on, on the day of judgment, God will, will project it. I told you that nothing will be hidden. Hallelujah. So God will project. Where I said that uh, I couldn't make it for solving because I, God, we shall see where you were. Hallelujah. 
But the only difference is there will be no condemnation. Hallelujah. But we shall see where you were. Hallelujah. Yes, the Bible says so. So we have to know that all of us has a right, has been given a responsibility to win souls. Hallelujah. A responsibility to win souls. Praise the Lord. So, follow instruction. The second one is love for God. Love for God. How do you show that you love God? Jesus said, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. You have to keep the commandments of the Lord that he has given us. Because that will be the basis of our reward on the commandments that he gave us. He says, go and preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations. So your intention of, of winning that person to the Lord is that you may make that person another soul winner. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if the person you have ever, it's, but it's not enough to just preach the gospel and say, okay, I preached to this person in the taxi and I don't know where he or she has gone. That is not an excuse. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ask for their contacts. Give them a call. Pray for them. Praise the Lord. Jesus gave accountability. He said, of all that you gave me, I have lost none except one. He was giving an accountability. So all those are the Lord who, you, you are going to see on that day how people slipped through your hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love for God. And number one, how do we love God? By keeping his commandments. Love for God also means passion for God. Yeah. It is the only fuel for aggressive evangelism. If you do not love God, you cannot be aggressive for evangelism. So to love God means to keep his commandments. Exodus chapter 20 verse 5 to 6. You can get that. Uh, Deuteronomy 11 verse 1 tells us about it also. John chapter 14 verse 15. Because of time, I'm not going to go there. But we'll, you'll just read during your time. Hallelujah. The second one, to love God is to take care of his concerns. The second point under that, to love God is to take care of his concerns. What concerns God? What are the things that move God? What are the things that are of a concern to his heart? He told Peter, Peter, son of Jonah, loveth thou me even this time? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said, take care of my sheep. Take care of my flock. Because he's concerned about his flock. Take care of the people that I've died for. What are those things that move God? What are those things that are concerned to God? Take care of them. That will demonstrate that you love him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For example, we want to, you think we just want to acquire this land? No. God wants this land. Praise the Lord. And the same pattern which he used to build the tabernacle, he would have just let the tabernacle just come out of heaven before the children of Israel. But he told Moses, he said, tell the children, let them bring gold, silver, whatever every man can give. Let them bring and you raise up a tabernacle that I may come and live among you. Hallelujah. And how do we know the things that concerns God's heart? We have a leader. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us when the priests were crossing Jordan, it said when, when they saw the ark move, the Bible says when you see the ark move, move. Amen. Hallelujah. So if a man of God brings an issue, we have to move with him. If he says our target now is this 1.8 acres, we all channel our resources to where? When the ark move, you do what? You move. Hallelujah. There is nothing you say, I do not have. Any. No. You can sell that chat. You can't.
can sell it. You cannot say that I don't have anything. No. The widow had a coin and she gave and Jesus did not reject that offering. He said of all those who have, this woman has given more. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Probably you have pairs of shoes you no longer sell them and bring the money. You have a phone that is no longer, who told you that the phone, there are people who are looking for scraps of phones. And they're there. And they will buy. And you'll bring the money. Why? Because the concerns of your heart as is unto those things that God wants. Praise the Lord. I am telling you, go get right now, go back to your home. Look around. The Holy Spirit will show you what you can give. I like the testimony of uh, our Apostle Bonnie. This first interview, the man of God always tells us here. He says, go and sow a seed. And he says, I don't have it. He said, no, you have. He said, go and see. So as he was scanning around, his spirit fell on this TV. Ha. And some of us are like that. You're looking and God tells you this phone you just bought yesterday. Aish. You just bought it 5.6. And God is telling you to give it. And you are there. Say, God, is it my mind? Is it really from you? Do the things of God move you? Do they move you? Look around your house. Look and there's, there is something, at least there is something that you can sell and bring the money for this land. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is something. Yes, I'm also going to go home, look around. If it means selling my shoe, I will sell. Because Jesus says to love him is to take care of his concern. Praise the Lord. We are not just acquiring this land because we are acquiring this to accommodate the people that are going to be helped. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. So take care of the things that move God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And souls move God's heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor, go home and look for what you can sell. Now the Bible says they sold those who were owners of land, owners of houses, sold them and brought the money and put at the apostles' feet. Did they lack anything? No. The Bible says none of them lacked anything. Because they knew the things that concerns God's heart. They didn't lack anything. They didn't. Praise the Lord. Hillary, you can sell those glasses. <laughs> at least in, Uga in Uganda, at least there is nothing that cannot be bought. <laughs> at least you'll find a buyer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me, even if it is 500 shillings, but you have done that with a purpose that you may be part of what God is doing. God sees it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God sees it. And the people brought until Moses said, hey, it's enough. It's enough. David prepared before he passed on. He said he prepared his heart for the house of God. So by the time Solomon came, he had enough to begin from. Yet even when Solomon came, it was too much. Praise the Lord. Take care of the things that move God. Hallelujah. To love God is to do those things that give him pleasure. To love God, to do those things that give him pleasure. Ha, hallelujah. Do the things that give him pleasure. Luke, Luke 15, verse 7 to 8. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do the things that give God pleasure. And what gives him pleasure? He said there is joy in heaven over one sinner. Hallelujah. There is joy in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. So if even if the whole of this week, 
You say, I'm going to talk to someone about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And by the way, sometimes they don't, they may not necessarily have to believe because those who believe, yours is to do the talking, to preach the gospel. The Holy Spirit's work is to convince the man or the person. Hallelujah. But you must be committed to it. Praise the Lord. The second point under the first one is, of course, passion for God or the love for God. The second thing is the love for souls. Love for souls. A, an effective soul winner must have love for souls. Must have love for souls. The Bible says, by desire, a man having separated himself intermingleth with wisdom. Praise the Lord. Do you desire to win souls? It will not just fall on you from heaven. You have to desire it. You have to pray that the Holy Spirit will stir up your heart. The Bible says, for the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Spirit. So you ask him, say, stir up my heart. Spread the love for people into my heart. Spread it abroad in my heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The love for people. Under that we realize that God, because he loved the world so much, he gave. Praise the Lord. Do you love this ministry? Do you love this ministry? Yes. Do you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. You're very sure? Yes. You love this ministry? Yes. Can I prove? Yes. I can prove. Yes. Can I have a volunteer? All of you said you love this ministry. All of you would have just run here. Can I have one volunteer? Clap for him for his boldness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell us the vision and the mission of the ministry. The vision is to raise associates of the God kind, manifesting divine life in all the earth. Mission? Yet to memorize. Clap for him. Ask your neighbor, are you familiar with the vision and the mission? No, there are leaders who don't even know. That's what we tell you, you have to come for leaders retreat. Do you even take to pray for this mandate? Do you even take time to ask the Lord to help us to fulfill this mandate? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love for people. May God give his only begotten son. He gave all that he had. The Bible says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Romans 8.32. Praise the Lord. He gave his son because he loved the world. The second point, because God, because of the love for people, Jesus gave his life. It was a voluntary act. It was not a must. Because a point reached when he said, Father, if it is thy will, let this cup pass from me. And the cup would have passed. Hallelujah. But he gave himself. He gave his own life as a ransom for every man. Praise the Lord. Every man has been atoned for. There is no man that has not been taken care of. Every man has been atoned for. The reason is now we have to go and tell them the news that your life has been redeemed. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We have to go and tell them the, that is the good news that Jesus Christ has paid for your life. You don't need to pay for your own. Because all those who reject will have to pay for the penalty. Because they rejected the gift of life. Hallelujah. So the love for people made Jesus Christ give himself. Hallelujah. The 
Can you give your time to pray? Can you give your time to come and reach out? Can you give your resources? What can you give that this person can be reached out to? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We even have an example. Okay, you may say, okay, God is, is divine. Uh, Jesus is divine. Paul himself cast, cast himself. He said, though I preach the gospel, he says, I glory in nothing of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yeah! Woe unto me. Do you know what that word means? He, he said, he, cast, he put himself in a position, a risky position. He says, if I preach not the gospel, woe unto me. If I preach not the gospel, he said, woe unto me. So Paul gave up his life. He said, though I preach, when you read from the context, he was talking about giving. He was talking about his rights to receive offerings. His right to receive from the churches. But he said, though I have power to receive all this, I have not used none of those. That the gospel be not abused. Hallelujah. He said, the blood, he said I, I am clean from the blood of all men. Because he knew the repercussions. If he didn't preach the gospel, the blood of the men that God had sent him to will be on his head. And God tells us that all persons that are not warned by you, he will ask you. He will require their life. In other words, what it means is he will ask you to produce them. Praise the Lord. So Paul said, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. And he says, those things which were gained to me, those I have counted as dung, that I may know him. The things that looked gainful to him. He put it aside. Not because he didn't want them, no. But he gave everything that he may preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And what does the Bible says? Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. It says, be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. It said, be followers of them. Read, read about men in the Bible. Men. <laughs> let, let me show you something. Romans chapter 16. To show you that God is specific when it comes to the ministry. The Bible says we are the body of Christ, but members in particular. In other words, God takes attention in a particular member of the work you're doing, of the contribution that you're bringing in. He is aware. Look at Romans chapter 16, verse 1 says, I commend unto you, number one, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at St. So the Holy Ghost begins to mention individuals with their contribution in the ministry. He said, first of all, I commend unto you, Phoebe, verse 2, that you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that your sister in whatever business she has in need of you, for she has been a succor or a helper of many and of myself also. Uh -huh. Greet Priscilla. And Aquila, my helpers in Christ, uh -huh. who, are for the, who have for my life laid down their own necks. Paul is trying to say, Aquila and Priscilla, for my life, for the life of Paul, they, they gave out, they, they hazarded their life. Hallelujah. That's why I ask you, do you love this ministry? Can you be like Priscilla and Aquila? Can you give your life for this ministry? Can you surrender that car? Can you surrender that land for this ministry? He says, Priscilla and Aquila, men that have laid down their own lives for my sake. And to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. The churches knew, hallelujah. The churches knew how much they have given in. They knew how much these people had contributed to the things of God. They knew. 
Likewise, greet the church which is in their house. Say leaders, when they, when, we, they, when they tell you about soul winning, this is it. The church was in their house. He said, greet the church also which is in their house. He didn't call it a cell. He calls it a church. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? He didn't call it a cell. He called it a what? A church. This is how serious it is. Salute my well-beloved Epatias, who is the first fruit of Acacia unto Christ. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. You see what the Spirit of God is doing? He's identifying individual members and their contribution. You ask yourself, can God call your name? Can he mention your name? When Satan went to present, the Bible says there was a time when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among themselves. Hallelujah. He disguised himself as one of the brethren and the angels, the archangels were not able to recognize him, only God.